Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. In this weird mix of music tech dystopia and utopia we live in, the two most valuable factors are space and time. Gone are the days of being locked away in big studios for months on end. Results, if there are any, need to be immediate and ideally created using an Insta-friendly setup that fits your carry-on luggage. Today we are going to talk about the 1010 Music Nanobox Fireball Wavetable Synthesizer. If you think that walkers are too small, Teenage Engineering only releases vastly overpriced lifestyle gimmicks and you prefer the utilitarian design language of vintage gear to a candy shop color palette, you're in for a treat. At the first glance, Fireball is ticking all the boxes. The instrument comes with two knobs more than an iPad. But a much smaller yet functional touchscreen and four Nokia phone worthy buttons for navigating the UI. The elegance and simplicity of the minimalist design is compromised by the cable stangling from its microscopic rear panel in case you want to actually play its eight voices via MIDI. Listen to the results or, much more basic, turn it on, as it doesn't come with internal battery options. With that out of the way, operating the synth is a breeze. Two wavetable sound generators with a nice selection of classic shapes. Vocalesque material. Complex waveforms. And the Batman. The raw sounds can be conveniently modulated, mixed with one conventional oscillator that, of course, lets you modulate pulse with, played in unison, and the output is beautifully visualized as long as you have 2020 vision. You can also monitor activity of the two envelopes. LFOs and easy to operate modulation sequencer without leaving the home screen. Dual multi-mode filters of the clean and digital kind offer a parallel and serial mode. The FX section consists of one machine for modulation FX One for reverb and delay and a master compressor. Many other on Vogue synth brands try to avoid implementation of card readers like the Plague, so it's great to see micro SD card based wavetable import and recording of internal and external sounds. It has become obvious that nanoboxes are not exactly one knob per function, so 1010 Music added a few performance features. A great keyboard with scales that makes a monotron feel like a grand piano and a freely assignable XY pad. It goes without saying that all this is ideally used for evolving soundscapes. Futuristic basses and proudly digital pads. Changing patches is not exactly smooth. <laughs> 
There is no MIDI or audio over USB, menu diving is omnipresent but not as annoying as I had expected and the synth is available for about the same price as the Keystep Pro you might want to use for playing it which feels kind of wrong. Thanks to German music tech distributor Tomeso for sending me this synth as a long term loan. Fireball is probably the smallest and most approachable wavetable synth out there. Does the minuscule form factor even make sense here and can it keep up with the bigger and more established competitors? You have already heard the little nano box in today's intro tune. Wave tables confirmed. Let's get a feeling for how compact the synthesizer actually is. worked better than expected. Bright, crunchy and with plenty of modulation options it's a nice counterpoint to the beefier Walker keys and fits the busy arrangement. The tiny screen and limited amount of knobs is not exactly inviting for more traditional synth heads. I wanna know how tweakable the instrument actually is. <laughs> Although Fireball has a well-rounded low end, I was struggling to get the brutality and in-your-face sound of, for example, Digital Waldorf's. The FX section sounds great. Many people love wavetable instruments for their abstract and evolving sounds. Time to find out how it fares as the primary synth in this sonic analogy to a cybernetic control loop and organic homage to digitality. <laughs> Wavetable synthesizers like Serum have become the industry standard in the plugin world and it makes total sense to have an ultra compact and easy to use instrument based on similar technology for hardware setups. It does however come with a few limitations, especially given the healthy price tag. Lack of internal battery, USB is power only, the unavoidable menu diving is certainly not everyone's cup of tea and it's missing the depth of the aforementioned software instruments both sonically and feature-wise. Nanoboxes might be even smaller than Walkers, but they ultimately failed to trigger the much-anticipated avalanche of memes about where you have to put them. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.